Major, major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. Welcome back to my channel. I want to thank you guys for actively deciding to spend time with me. I'm just a guy in a Spider-Man mask, a cool one I might add. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just providing information and content already on the internet. And I just read it and present it to you guys in a way that may reach you or may not reach you. Whatever the reason is you found my page, I'm grateful you're here. And thank you for spending time with me. Let's get into this. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. I'm Mr. Man. Today, I'm going to be talking about gold. I'm going to be talking about the reasons for gold. I'm going to be talking about CBDCs, gold back CBDCs, the structures for that, and the reason why gold might be a good idea for you. And to make my point here, I'm going to show you guys some of the th gold that I have too. Um, there's different denominations of gold. There's the big bars that most people see, know, and are familiar with. My eyes are falling down here. See, know, and are familiar with. But there's different types. There's little, little ones like this, which are the easiest to say trade with somebody or sell off to somebody at lower denominations. Then higher or uh, just larger ones. There are the mid-size, tiny, tiny, tiny. Just to give you a little perspective, they're tiny coins. Again, easier to sell off. Then you have, or sorry, little bars. Then you have little coins as well. And you work your way up to so something like this. There we go. Is it easy to see now? Okay. And then you go up to bars and coins, and we have coins as well. But now let me just make the case for gold and why it's important to have for yourself, for your family self, for your wealth preservation. This is from last year from Kitco. Buying opportunity for gold is this December, this is last year, is this December, early 2023, says RBC. RBC is a bank for some of you that aren't in Canada and don't know. They're also in the U.S. and Mexico. Mexico? Panama, sorry. So, Kitco News, there will be several good buying opportunities for those wanting to enter the gold market, according to RBC Capital Markets. But the lower gold prices will last only until... The end of December and the beginning of next year, which was this year, there will be a number of buying opportunities in what remains of 2023 and into early or 2022, sorry, and into early 2023 in preparation for a turn of some of the most gold negative macro factors <clears throat> with a likely exit coming around the end of next year before 2024. We are about to break that, that time frame there that RBC is calling for. We are at the end of 2023, heading into 2024. Like it says there, around the end of next year before 2024, which is this year, the time we're living in, begins in earnest according to our base case outlook, said RBC Capital Markets Commodities Strategist Christopher Loney. RBC is looking for gold to average 18.90 an ounce in the fourth quarter Right now that we're living, Monia told Kitco. In its 2022 outlook, RBC projected for gold to trade at 1786 an ounce in fourth quarter last year. I used my head to point. At the end of at the time of this writing, which was last last year, spot gold was trading at 1787, a dollar over the, what their estimates were, which is actually down 2.3% year to date last year. This year has been defined by gold's tug of war between the inflation drive uh, driven store of value trade and negative gold macro factors. Looney said this this week, the tug of war led prices lower until more recently when the conversation has pivoted around monetary policy and what sort of economic bumps we may encounter in 2023. I'm going to bring some of those economic bumps that we've encountered in 2023. And beyond, RBC's commodity strategists explained macro investors have been in the in the driver's seat and will likely remain so. While investor uh, allocation to gold have declined significantly and risks persist, 
On balance, we think gold will have more momentum given the bumpier economic times that seem to be ahead. Next year looks brighter for the precious metal as sentiment around the Federal Reserve economic growth and peak rates shift. This is why it's best to get into gold before that happens, okay? As conversations turn, gold prices perk up. Let me move this here so you guys can hear me better. And the weight of gold negative macro drivers seem to be lightening. We raise our middle base our middle base case for 2023 to 1807 an ounce. This is Canadian or US sorry, which implies upside by the end of next year, which is this year. For example, 1890. So the Forecasting an $87 increase on average by Q4 2023, which is we're living in now, RBC said is its best outlook. The bank also has high and low scenarios, which see gold at 2100 an ounce or 1667 an ounce, depending on which way it goes uh, in fourth quarter of next year, respectively. The difference between our high scenario and middle base scenario across all future tenors comes down to a material risk event. Material risk event occurs. Lots of Russia and China related risks here. Not only them. The 2023 outlook said, while 2023 looks stronger year over year, our base case assumes some level of normalization in 2024. Yet, our high scenario, which assumes a higher level of risk off attention sees a continued increase perfect let's go see what the world gold council has to say okay gold mid-year outlook for 2023 between a soft and a hard place you know they keep talking about that hard landing and soft landing we're going for they're not going to achieve no soft landing they're getting a hard hard landing okay is that where they want to start right here okay Developed markets, uh, central banks are nearing the end of their tightening cycles for now. Market consensus points to a mild contraction in the U.S. in late 2023 and slow growth in developed markets. But given the historic lag, historical lag between monetary policy and economic performance, investors are wary that a hard landing may still come. It's going to come. It's, there's, there's no way they can avoid it. I'm sorry. There's no way they can avoid it. They are tightening to, to a point now where something is going to break. Things have already broken and things are going to continue to break. You have seen mom and pop stores go out of business. The average person can afford to sustain their lifestyle, uh, irregardless of what their lifestyle is. Um, the cost of living has gone up, again, which is their lifestyle. You're going to look, you're going to see things like real estate uh, break, if you will, and prices begin to decrease around real estate in major city city centers and once that begins to happen people will begin to try and move and may not be so successful so you'll see a saturation of real estate on the market at that point with that saturation of real estate prices are going to have to fall because people cannot afford anything as it stands the consumer is tapped out and going to be further tapped out so at the pace that they're tightening right now Something will break. Something big. And now we have this war with Hamas and Israel out in uh, the Middle East there. I say the Middle East because I don't know exactly where it is. I'm just going to be straight and frank with you guys. But for now, market consensus points to the mild contraction in the U.S. in late 2023 and slow growth in developed markets. But given the historic lag between monetary policy and economic performance, investors are wary that a hard landing may still exactly... In this context, the following gold's positive returns in H1, we expect gold to remain supported on the back of range-bound bond bond yields and a weaker dollar. So the dollar continues to weaken out, begins continues to get weaker, the expectations for gold to even out at that point. If you recall the uh, black swan we had last year, when we found out that Japan has started selling the U.S. bonds off at that point to strengthen their own dollar, because they, it, was, it cost them too much to spend their dollar, their Japanese dollar, on the U.S. government bonds to keep the U.S. value the uh, value of the dollar up, 
which in turn was weakening their dollar. So they had to drop a bunch of those dump the government bonds at that point. Gold should experience stronger investment demand if economic conditions deteriorate. Remember this line. Gold should experience stronger investment demand if economic conditions deteriorate. Conversely, a soft landing or much tighter monetary policy could result in disinvestment. People fleeing from the investment. But this right here, deteriorate. Okay, so let's, let's go through it. This is what we're dealing with right now. Let me mute my audio and I'll jump into it. Closer to Israel and has placed more military assets in the Middle East. President Joe Biden told Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that additional assistance is on the way in the coming days. Sky's Mark Stone has more. The U.S. is sending quite a few ships to the region, including an aircraft carrier. The U.S. Um, aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford, uh, is to be the, deployed to the Mediterranean just off the coast of Israel. Alongside that will be a missile cruiser, uh, the USS Normandy, uh, and then four uh, guided missile destroyers, the USS uh, Hudna, the Rampage, the Kearney, and the Roosevelt. Um, so a, a significant uh, U.S. deployment of its own assets uh, to a conflict which clearly the White House believes has the potential uh, to spiral well beyond Israel-Palestine. Uh, um, the Defence Department says that the, um, the motive behind this deployment is to strengthen the Department of Defence posture in the region to bolster regional de deterrence efforts. Uh, it is quite clear now um, that any hope that this would uh, be contained to Gaza uh, it is probably misguided. Uh, it is likely to spread certainly to the West Bank. Uh, Lebanon and Hezbollah uh, could become entangled in it as well, taking advantage of what they see as an Israeli weakness. And then, of course, beyond that, and I think this is the reason for, for such a, a deterrence deployment by America, beyond that is Iran. Um, Amer uh, the, United, the Israelis clearly believe that ultimately this is Iran's work. Iran is, is ultimately responsible for what happened this weekend. So you'll notice that the individual is blaming somebody. It's always somebody's responsibility. It's a reason to blame, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if he's right, wrong, or indifferent. Either way, there's always a reason to blame somebody. And here's Joe Biden now talking about how the U.S. will stand with Israel. <clears throat> All right. So you heard them saying that, that that war is taking place now. You heard them talking about U.S. to send military assistance to Israel for this conflict. And now here's Joe Biden talking about them standing behind Israel. These are under attack, orchestrated by a terrorist organization, Hamas. In this moment of tragedy, I want to say to them and to the world and to terrorists everywhere that the United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in a space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. When I got up this morning and started this at 7.30, 8 o'clock, my calls, Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians. In the street, in their homes, innocent people murdered, wounded, entire families taken hostage by Hamas. Just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar. You know, when I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu... Okay. So there you have Biden saying that they're going to stand behind Israel no matter what. You know, we got you guys. We're here. We're here. We have your back. As we continue to go on, back in 2018 here, Trump was noted saying, every year we give Israel $4.5 every year. 
They'll be good. They'll be all right. They don't need our help. U.S. President says Israel knows how to defend itself very well. And so it will be fine even after the U.S. withdrawal from, from uh, Syria. So back in 2018, what was that? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, five years ago. Quick maths. Five years ago, they had pulled out and still offered $4.5 billion a year. And now they're sending arms over there. So you can imagine how much more printing is going to happen. Money printing. Economic forces or macro forces are deteriorating, deteriorating, as we had stated there, right? Gold should experience stronger investment demand if economic conditions deteriorate. They are definitely deteriorating, as we are seeing here, this war take, taking place. Here is the video of Trump stating that now. This says, did Trump snub Israel by pulling out of Syria? If you're sending $4.5 to a country, like that's... That's a huge that's a huge sum of money and Syria is well equipped they have some of the best military some of the best um, security um, tools weaponry technology needed some of the best so how how some unsophisticated terrorist group managed to cross the border and and I don't is beyond me it is beyond me let's just check this out quickly military aid it gets from the US. You know, we give Israel $4.5 billion a year, and they're doing very well at defending themselves, if you take a look. But we'll be there for Israel. We'll always be there for Israel. I'm the one that moved the embassy to Jerusalem. So you heard President Trump back in the day, state 2018, state that they will be there for Israel, always be there for Israel. And now Joe Biden is there staying also furthering the stance that we will be there for Israel and stands with Israel. And now there's going to be some more money printing at that point, which is going to cause more macroeconomic conditions for that to deteriorate this is an article from what is this trading news here uk this is back in august the brick summit 2023 the de-dollarization challenge brick summit 2023 navigating de-dollarization challenges so the dollar losing value is creating another point or bucket if you will for the reasons to stand behind gold when countries and individuals lose value in their sovereign currencies, if you will, they run back to hard money. They run back to gold. They run back to silver. They run back to precious metals. So the ongoing de-dollarization journey. While alter alternatives to the dollar in international trade are expected to grow, significant challenges remain. The impending refinancing needs across emerging markets pose a risk, potentially keeping the dollar strong against most BRICS currencies. So right now, the dollar still seems strong against the other BRICS currencies because a lot of them are emerging in markets. So of course it seems seems strong when put as the when the U.S. dollar is put as the base against those other the currencies. Sorry. So. Highlight the uh, overbought nature of the dollar. The current macroeconomic landscape presents substantial risk, making it uncertain whether the dollar will continue its strength or faces a significant pullback in the coming days. In conclusion, the BRICS summit serves as a stage for vital discussion, but de-dollarization remains a complex challenge. As BRICS nations navigate this path, the dynamics of global finance and trade are likely to, to evolve with potential implications for emerging markets and the strength of the dollar. So here, here's further reasons for uh, further reasons to have to hold physical gold, right? This stuff is physical. This is tangible. This is real. This is in my hand right now. It's not backed by government. It's it's gold. It's worth money because every country, every individual sees it as something real and has value pegged to it. Okay. Let's jump into Good Morning America here and see what they have to say about their warning about surge in organization and organized retail crime. Warning about a surge in organized retail crime. Stores are losing big money, raising prices to cover it. And the greatest cost could be to the safety of workers. 
Arrow Rush up here with the details. Good morning, Arrow. Good morning to you, George. Retailers we talked to are losing billions of dollars to organized retail crime, and authorities are warning that this has become an absolute threat to public safety with violent gangs, dangerous international crime rings, and even groups with suspected ties to terrorism increasingly getting involved. You've seen the videos of brazen smash and grabs at many different retailers across the country. And federal authorities are now sounding the alarm about coordinated robberies like these. It's an absolute threat. It's called organized retail crime, where groups of criminals steal high value items to then sell online or elsewhere. They know exactly what stores to hit, when and where. And obviously, the profitability is the key here. Retailers say this type of crime is reaching unprecedented levels forcing the average family to pay an estimated $500 more each year on goods. Are you seeing a dramatic rise in this type of crime? Absolutely. It's growing double digit year over year. And Homeland Security officials tell ABC News they now see violent gangs and dangerous international groups getting involved, organizations suspected of ties to drug trafficking or even terrorism financing. These criminal networks, they may be full-time drug traffickers that see an opportunity to work with a crew that's already stealing. Big box retailers like the Home Depot have been hit especially hard, investigating hundreds of cases and losing billions of dollars this past year alone. This is what we refer to our billion dollar aisles, billions and billions of dollars worth of sales in this product. And then about a third of our uh, losses from a theft and frauds perspective come from, you know, power tools particularly. Why do you believe that you've seen such an uptick? Pandemic aside, which kind of emboldened some people wearing masks. So there's the online proliferation. About 90% of our organized retail crime cases involve some type of online selling platform. Opioids and fentanyl continuing to drive the need for fast cash. But worrying these stores even more, they say thieves are growing more and more violent, threatening employees with guns, knives, even a hammer. Home Depot says it's taking steps to protect its workers and fight growing organized retail crime, showing us new measures they're testing in this store outside Atlanta. Alarmed gates, increased surveillance, and locking up merchandise. How much is a school like that worth? Anywhere from $1,000 to upward of about $3,500. How much do you think one of these spools weighs? Probably clo close to 500, 800 pounds. They're rolling it out, throwing it in the back of a pickup truck or the trunk of a car and speeding away. You can see that we've had to you know, put a barrier in between the, the bad actors and the, and the product. But is it working? It's definitely working. And Home Depot acknowledges that these measures can create a barrier. You see the issues taking place here now. A lot of these stores can't handle this influx in, in theft. So a lot of stores are closing down. People are stealing to survive right now. Stealing to whether good, bad, or indifference. That's, you know, they all have their own view on what survival is. A lot of, people a lot of these people are stealing now so they can survive. Yeah, they're thriving, but they're surviving too. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just telling you. Put yourself in their mind frame and what their thought is yeah it's a very very interesting place to be now as we continue on with the weak dollar here the dollar weakening and the reason behind owning gold as i gave you ideas or the ideology of the gold council i gave you the ideology of the weakening dollar against the BRICS nation and their currencies and now here's a, a little a quick video on the dollar weakness hiding in, in in its real vulnerabilities, okay? Since March of 2020, the U.S. dollar has lost a staggering 11% of its value against the dollar index. Despite this loss, many will argue that this is an underrepresentation of the dollar's weakness due to the prevalence of global central bank intervention in response to the pandemic, in effect weakening all global currencies. If you measure the dollar against commodities, real estate, consumer goods, cryptocurrencies, it certainly bolsters the case of a weakening dollar. Basic technical analysis of the dollar also confirms the negative momentum as it remains comfortably below moving averages on the 50, 100, and 200 day. But there appears to be a more important technical indicator that traders are looking at. The long-term chart of the dollar index shows significant support between 88.50 and 90. This level has been reached twice in the past six years, and it has held firm both times. Traders' attention will be glued to this level, because if it gives way, it could open the door to further dollar losses. So, the BIS and three central banks successfully completed a CBDC experiment using DeFi networks. This came out in October, 20, October 3rd, 2023, which was eight, 
six days ago, sorry. Um, so the BIS worked with the Central Bank of France, Singapore, Switzerland to test the effectiveness of cross-border trading and settlement of a wholesale CBDC referred to as a WCBDC between uh, simulated financial institutions. Banks use WCBDCs for the settlements for wholesale payments as opposed to retail, which are offered to the general public for payments. Dubbed Project Mariana, the BIS experiment used hypothetical euro, the Singapore dollar, and the Swiss francs uh, WC, WCBDC, as well as common techni technical token standard provided by a public blockchain. I wonder what that public blockchain is. All right, I believe it was Ethereum for Project Marina, Mariana, uh, to facilitate the exchange between the currencies. Okay, Project Mariana also used bridges to transfer the wholesale CBDC, an automatic, automated, and an automated made. Oh Jesus, and an automated market maker, AMM for trades. So they have bridges. I had shown you the IMF, a case for bridges, trusted bridges. Um, for market and for market makers, XR, uh, the XRPL now has market makers on their AMM, or there's a vote coming. I don't remember which one it is. For Project Mariana, the AMM pooled the liquidity of the hypothetical euro, the Singapore dollar, and Swiss francs with WCBDCs, with initiative algorithm, innovative algorithms, enabling spot FX transactions to be priced and executed automatically and settled immediately. These protocols could be used by the next generation of financial market infrastructures, facilitating cross-border trading and settlements between financial institutions. The BIS cautions that Project Mariana was purely experimental and doesn't mean that any of the countries involved actually have plans to issue a, w a wholesale CBDC or utilize DeFi technology. Of course they do. Of course they do. They have intentions to utilize a WCBDC and DeFi technology. That's why they're doing these experiments. They're not just doing experiments because, hey, you know, I wonder what A, B, and C does. And let's never do anything with this ever again. The end. Okay. My butthole. So this here. Let's go up here. Why is Yuki? It's just going in circles. Stop. Okay. So this here. It's con from the uh, considerations for a central bank digital currency. The Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. I sounded like Biden just there, just couldn't put words together. Okay. So we have seen a wide range of motivations for, for this work, including addressing specific inefficiencies in the payment system, providing a CBDC if cash use were to decline. We've seen the reasons for cash use to decline. You've seen the coronavirus now. You've seen the weakening dollar around the country with the BRICS nations. Or promoting broader private sector innovation for future generation of payments, which is a wholesale, which is a stable coin. Improving the speed of payments, particularly retail payments, can be accomplished without the introduction of a CBDC. In the U.S., beginning later this year, the Federal Reserve's FedNow System Service will enable banks in the United States to offer their customers the ability to send and receive payments in real time. Their customers aren't you and I. Their customers are placed like are, are companies like uh, Pigeon, uh, FIS, Finastra. Um, I say FIS, yeah, Finastra, uh, and a few other places that will co um, companies that will connect to the FedNow service. That rolled out. This this is an article from June, and that had rolled out in July, July twenty twenty three. They brought it out. Is that everything I want to read? There was that. Yeah, I read that. Improving. Yep, I read that. I read that. I read that. Okay, policymakers have also raised other arguments for why a CBDC may be suitable in their home countries, why it may be. Some have argued that a CBDC would facilitate large value transactions between financial institutions. Others see a CBDC as a vehicle to improve upon international payments. We saw Project Mariana there for uh, international payments. 
and still others view CBDC as necessary to preserve the, whole, the role of central bank money as a stabilizing force in the payment system and to safeguard monetary sovereignty. Who's others? Who are the others that see this? Other central banks. Or to ensure the, that digital money has a high degree of safety and uniformity to promote innovation and competition. Central bank money is, is essentially, essentially a fiat dollar, but it's wrapped. It's backed by nothing, really. In government we trust, but it's wrapped around a stable coin. So that's, that's a wrapped, that's the first use case for the wrapped something, anything wrapped at this point. The stable coin is the one that has the, peg, the pegging mechanism, whether pegged to a, the, the, the US fiat dollar or pegged to commodities such as gold, silver, real estate, whatever it is. But the stable coin has that value. The CBDC is a wrapped around that stable coin to create its encompassing value is a good word to put it there. So what is a central bank digital currency? This is a, a called consultancy group, McKenzie and Company here. This is back from March of this year, 2023. Here we go. Why have central banks become interested in CBDCs? The plummeting cash usage, which we've just gone over as well in Europe, cash usage, usage declined by one third between 2014 and 2021. In Norway, only 3% of payment transactions are made with cash now. This trend has forced central banks to re-examine their role in the monetary system. Do we want to use cash? Do we not use cash? What do we do? How can we get money out there faster? Because cash isn't working. We need more control too, as Augustine Carsons has said. So the growing interest in privately issued digital assets in the United Kingdom, 10% of adults report holding or having held a digital asset like a cryptocurrency. The European Central Bank says that as many as 10% of households in six large EU countries own digital assets. Consumer use of digital assets can be viewed as a potential challenge to fiat currency as a unit of measure of value. Decreasing sense of central banks as payments innovators, CBDCs offer central banks a new opportunity to lead strategic conversations on cash use cases in public forum. They're trying to make CBDCs like cash. They want to have offline uses. They want to have it so you can have a semi-anonymous usage well. So if you send something offline, it doesn't necessarily track the amount. It just tracks certain aspects of it. I don't recall what exactly they were, but there is innovation trying to happen and take place to um, utilize offline payments where only a portion of it is of that transaction is, ca is tracked sort of like cash like when you pull it out of a banking machine ATM the tracking stops at that point with what happens in the real world they're trying to accomplish that to a degree with digital currency but to a degree it's always tracked always what are the potential benefits of a CBDC the increased speed CBDCs could, could improve the speed and efficiency of many countries, electronics, payment systems. The ar This argument is becoming less compelling. Okay. So, CBDCs. We spoke about the BRICS earlier and them de-dollarizing. And what are they doing now? Russia confirms BRICS will create a gold back currency. Right? The BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China. South Africa, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and the 19 others waiting on that list to become a part of the BRICS nations there. Did Mexico send an application too? Huh. The gold market could see new bullish momentum. When was this by? This was July of this year, a couple months ago. New bullish momentum as the world could see a new type of gold standard. Do you remember that article we had read in the beginning there? By Kitco as well. See how it's all coming together. RBC states gold average $1,800 here. Was it the number buying? Anyways, in here, right here, this will be a number of buy. There will be a number of buying opportunities in what remains of 2022 into early 2023 in preparation for a turn of some of the most gold negative macro factors. Gold negative mac macro factors. I've showed you some of those gold negative macro factors with the likely exit coming around the end of next year before 2024. 
we are heading into that time right now or we are there right now so here we go here we go just july they came out and said they're coming out with a rush uh, they should they should come up with a BRICS gold back currency Friday, according to a state-run RT, the Russian government has confirmed that Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, also known as the BRICS nations, will introduce a new trading currency backed by gold. If this doesn't paint the picture for why hold gold, I don't know. I've given you multiple reasons to. I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm just trying to provide reasons on why it would be a good reason to hold gold. The official announcement is expected to be made during the BRICS summit in August. There was no official announcement about the gold in August. So the latest news is adding new momentum to the ongoing de-dollarization trend unfolding in the global economy. Since mid-2022, central banks worldwide have been buying gold at a historic pace, in part to diversify their reserve away from the U.S. dollar. For many analysts, a gold-backed currency is the next evolution in this process. Many analysts have seen China's recent gold purchases as an attempt to bring international credibility to the yuan. From my recollection, the yuan was added to the SDR, Basket of Currencies, to the, by the IMF. I believe I showed that video as well. And now, China is increasing their footprint. Here we go. Is this it? We're just going back into more decline. This is it here. So, where did it go? Where did you go? <laughs> here we go. Okay. So, the shares in vo of the volume and value of transactions paid with cash declined steadily between November 2017 and November 2020, we saw 2024, 2014 until recently 2023. Another talking about a midsection there, November 17th and November 2020. So three year difference. At the same time, shares of contactless payment increased significantly. We saw reasons be for that, which would, which would be can be contributed to the coronavirus. Cash is dirty. I don't want to touch cash. Let's get rid of it. It's easy to tappy tap 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 at that point. We don't trust cash. Let's create the, the reasons for our CBDCs as we were looking at already. Nevertheless, a significant portion of low value transaction is still made with cash, low valued. More specifically, in November 2020, 40% of the volume of low value transaction between $15 was paid with cash, low value. Not many people are keeping $100, you know, $50, $20, low value, just easy, quick and done. Cash use tends to be more prevalent in certain demographic groups. Older, less educated, and low-income individuals use cash to pay more than other Canadians do. People in, in each of these demographic groups pay at least 25% of the volume number of their purchases with cash. I don't know. If this doesn't paint the picture for why hold gold, you know, different denominations of gold, Better than cash has an intrinsic value around the world. You can peg the dollar to cash. You can put the the dollar against the, the the gold against anything, against any other commodity, any other currency, and it reigns true. That'll happen once these digital digital platforms roll out. You can put a, a trade a house against a, a sheep or a cow or some whatever it is at that point. You can do that because it'll all be done digitally. You can trade this for that and swap whatever the heck you want. Because it'll all be tokenized. There'll be an NFT, a digital twin of it. And you can just swap digital twins. The downside to that is everything will be swapped. I mean, everything will be tracked. So do recognize that. Do recognize there's a use for gold. Don't be so, Don't be like one of those people that say, I don't see the use for gold unless it's jewelry. Jewelry is something that's intrinsic valued. So you can pay $200 for a couple rings. Or you can pay a couple hundred dollars. Less than the, this thing, these rings cost more than this, okay? I'll tell you that. In the long, long, long game of things, those rings cost more than the actual gold bar or gold coin itself. Because people put value into marriage rings, into anniversary rings, into engagement rings, into things of jewelry purposes. There's an intrinsic value. You believe it to be worth more than it actually is, okay? 
So gold is the way to go right now. That is another safe haven and a way to protect your, your wealth. Thank you guys for spending time with me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Make it major moves. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves.